Welcome to Hacked, the series where we talk about all things feats, speed and hacks. Now the topic of today is exactly how strong is Toruga. Toruga is a series that perfectly describes what would happen if Hunter Hunter and One Piece had a love child. It's the story of a blue haired hunter, born in a great gourmet era, sparked by Acacia, a man said to have experienced all of the foods that the world had to offer, ushering in his time of gluttony. In fact, food may very well be the most important thing in the Toruga world, even being stated multiple times that being stripped of one's appetite is the equivalent to death. And as a result of constantly evolving appetites, the desire to satiate these hungers proportionally increased and that is the reason to which all gourmet hunters exist. Some hunt for wealth and others for what really matters, to feast upon all that life has to offer. Now here's where Toruko comes in. Toruko's goal is to complete his life's full course menu and so he partners up with the man who would later be known as one of the greatest chefs to ever exist in a journey to experience the finest ingredients life has to offer. Toruko is a part of the Heavenly Kings, a group of the greatest gourmet hunters of the new era who rise up against the antagonists of the series such as the Gourmet Corp and the Blue Nitro who seek the greatest ingredient of all, God. Now with that being said, how strong is Toruko? Toruko on his quest to complete his full course has to go to the gourmet world. To survive the gourmet world, one must not only be strong but also be able to instantaneously adapt to their environment, and hence the source of the verse is scaling the gourmet demons and cells. Toruko as well as the three other heavenly kings possess special cells within their body known as gourmet cells. These cells originated from the gourmet jellyfish which had incredible regenerative and evolutionary properties. The body becomes a vehicle for these cells and increases in strength to taste of the food its host consumes or by being stressed which causes reactive evolution. Ichiryu, the disciple of the late Acacia and teacher of Toruko, in anticipation of Toruko's trip to the gourmet world, instructed him to gather ingredients which significantly strengthened these cells so these cells could adapt to any situation that they encountered. And it's thanks to this that he has an absurd amount of hacks, such as when he acquired the ozone grass at altitudes 20,000 meters above the earth's surface. His cells evolved to become fuel efficient by cutting some of the oxygen in the breathing process. Toruko only excels carbon dioxide in areas of high oxygen scarcity, and when he ate air, one of the legendary ingredients in Acacia's full course milk, it further heightened his breathing capabilities. Given Toruko the ability to breathe without oxygen for long periods of time, it also significantly improved his blood flow along with all other basic bodily functions. It's thanks to this enhanced respiratory system that he can heal anything from slight scratches to severe burns in mere seconds. Air also exponentially improves an individual's eyesight, meaning Toruko can see across distant galaxies, which will be important when we talk about the Toruko cosmology later on. Toruko's cells demonstrated their reactive evolutionary capabilities when they were at work at an area of five times the Earth's normal gravity. By vibrating viciously, they built up static electricity that counteracts the Earth's magnetic field. Toruko cells also do other absurd things, and after eating news, these cells actually divide and replicate faster than the speed of light. Toruko also has a resistance to 70 plus different types of poison. By mastering food's end, he increases calorie consumption efficiency. He can surpass his body's intake of calories and sustain himself on the same rations almost indefinitely, meaning he can go for countless months without food nor water. <laughs> One of my favorite hacks of his is the ultimate routine. A routine is a sequence of movements which solidifies an image of successfully performing a technique. A routine's complexity is proportional to the success rate and effectiveness of a technique. The ultimate routine uses overwhelming confidence to trick one's mind and reality itself into bringing fantasy into this reality, including anything from recovering from ulcers to developing really strong heat resistances. Toruko's most iconic ability is his inhuman sense of smell, which detects anything on a planetary scale with a dizzying level of complexity. This sense of smell is a perfect match for Toruko's vast scientific knowledge and can break down the effects of poisons and their compositions and can even be used to make new compounds using his cells. He can also detect fragrances from the distant past, smell odorless and even intangible substances in even separate space times. Oh, hell no. He also has resistances to things like illusions, fortune manipulation with food luck, along with many, many other abilities. Aside from hacks, Toruko has insane battle IQ, allowing him to predict the movements of an enemy based on joint flexibility, breathing and muscle tension, reduce the delay between detecting a stimulus and conscious actions, and even mastered monkey martial arts which cuts his delay down by an otherworldly extent. Monkey martial arts is the art of honing all 60 trillion cells within the body, allowing the user to accurately catch the flow of energy and make the entire body a sieve of energy. Toruko can parry all kinds of forces due to this, including gravity manipulation and cuts out cognitive action by using all of the cells to react to a stimulus, meaning that Toruko's perception actually occurs at a tactile level, which is going to be very important when we talk about a particular feat later on. Now in terms of AP, his first noticeable feat was him one-shotting an enormous piece of iron ore, which took large town levels of force 
and by the cooking island arc all of the heavenly kings could wipe out entire islands off the map putting him consistently at large island level plus at this point in time now nothing really matters until everybody starts really really evolving their gourmet cells lighting a cautious full course and reaching the level of his disciples in jiro ichiryu and midora these characters are each capable of destroying the toriko world now this is absurd for a few reasons primarily because in this gourmet universe if you eat one of a cautious full course ingredients for example another this would turn everything into an ingredient and this caveman's logic also extends to things like the earth itself yes because the earth is actually cooking oh, hell no man what the fuck man oh. After gourmet cells migrated over several hundred million years ago, they created a new mantle and core which caused the earth to grow several times the size of the original planet, with a canonical circumference stretching 220,000 kilometers and is also supported by the world serpent who can wrap itself around the entire world with a body length of 220,000 kilometers. This planet is so big that it had a seat less than a quadrant in size that could take in an entire moon without making a single noise. On top of this, we also have things like the meteors which Etudio's weakened food spirit threw at Neo large enough to eclipse and destroy entire planets, yet didn't even remotely affect the Toriko planet. Anyways, it's stated that the explosion generated by the destruction of this planet is even greater than the supernova explosion of a giant star, meaning that anyone who can destroy the Toriko planet needs to be able to overcome a gravitational binding energy greater than that of a large star. I've seen some different interpretations of this scan, so I'd like to clarify what I think it entails. At the moment of explosion, it synthesizes the heavy elements to produce golden materials. This scan isn't saying that the synthesis of materials contribute to the energy of the explosion. All it's implying is that the explosion produces energy that overcomes the activation energy for the reaction which synthesizes these materials and not the other way around. I also think it's consistent for it to require this much energy or greater. A significantly weakened Don Slime replicated a super condensed star that made up for its lack of volume of a super large solar mass can't even destroy this planet. Mind you that the star feat upscales from him literally jumping across and destroying moons in the process without trying. But also we have characters like Jiro who can casually stop the rotational energy of this absolutely enormous planet producing large planetary to dwarf star levels of energy at low ball. Toriko can clash with Neo who ate Don Slime's star. Top tiers like Toriko should easily be in a large star at the solar system level range. Now the reason I say solar system level is because we know that Toriko's world has a larger gravitational binding energy than our own but it's still proportional in distance to our solar system and its Milky Way galaxy also being modeled after our own. For these celestial bodies to not get drawn into each other and destroyed they'd need to have proportionally increased gravitational binding energies to stay beyond the Roche limit. Hence the standards for the size of these stars would also have to be larger than our own. Toriko and Joe with their incredible senses of eyesight also comment that the planet is relatively small which furthers consistency of things in Toriko just generally being bigger and so we should accept them as bigger when calculating things. I would likely put the gravitational binding energy at solar system level and potentially even higher. Finally let's talk about speed. Now Toriko characters are fast, let's skip the contentious early feats which are contradicted by other statements and talk about after the cooking island arc. Coco, a fellow member of the heavenly kings, can throw mold spears which travel at the speed of light. Now after this point these characters all reach relativistic speeds and can travel through the gourmet world wherein they pass through biomes which literally rain down photonic lasers. Now top tier characters like Midora, even lowballing the Toriko earth size, can fling his hungry whip and also fire meteor lasers to stop Akashia when he's trying to crush the world at faster than light speeds which is also backed up by a preponderance of light speed statements. The speed scaling just skyrockets from there. When God emerges it casually dodges Coco's mold spears that move at light speed which I've calculated to be 13.6 times the speed of light and the speed doesn't stop there. We now reach the most iconic speed feat in Toriko, Dragon King Deros' laser. Deros fires an attacker weakened and off guard Akashia who's mid-air and narrowly dodges losing his armor in the process and traveling from earth to a distant planet without the forces of gravity pulling Acacia's body anywhere from one to three centimeters. Now whilst lowballing the size of the Toriko planet and the planet the laser passes that would be smaller than all of the canonical planets ranging from 140,000 kilometers to 150,000 kilometers in diameter and we actually get a speed of 55 times the speed of light for the dodge. When we use the size of the planet that has an identical design and shape of the planet in the shot we get a speed of 90 times the speed of light and I think both of these honestly are disingenuous ingenuous lowballs just because we don't actually know how far the laser continues to travel before Acacia dodges it but for lack of quantification this is the best we have. Now you can argue Neo just straight up scales at this laser speed which I actually don't have a problem with since he blitzes the simultaneous combined attack of the eight kings when they're now actually trying desperately to kill God and are stated to be using their full power. Logically this should actually be above this previous feat which would put him at 120 times the speed of light. Not only does this occur before Acacia eats his appetite and gets massively faster we actually have an even better quantifiable feat. In chapter to 372, God shoots its tongue around the circumference of the earth before any of the fully on guard heavenly kings can perceive nor react. Mind you that as I explained,
explained earlier, these characters react at a tactile slash cellular level using monkey martial arts. On top of them deploying their instinctual sensing techniques like Sunny's passive sensors, Coco's EM wave detecting eyes, Zebra's echolocation map, and Toriko's planet wide or flick to resent. This feat happens so fast that the only way they realize this event has taken place is because they notice that the tip of his tongue is now on his back. Now, thanks to the National Library of this gives us a time frame for the Piscinian corpuscles contraction and using that we get a speed of 256.8 times the speed of light which an on guard Acacia can repeatedly dodge putting top tier characters like Midora, Toroko and of course Acacia at MFTL very consistently and to top it off Toroko eats his causing his speed to increase to the point of him being able to punch an on guard massively faster version of Acacia without even trying, hurling him around the entire world before he can even react. So Toro goes very comfortably into MFTR and even faster with White Oni. Now if you enjoyed this behemoth of a video, comment, subscribe, make sure you click the noti bell so you're first to see when the next video, which is going to be discussing FTR One Piece is released, it should be out within the next few days. Take care guys.